Hello everyone, thanks for joining. My name is Max Harbin. I'm with Cisco Small Business Pre-Sales. I'm going to be demonstrating for you today uh, one of our exciting new patented features, Voice Services Discovery Protocol, in conjunction with uh, SMB features on our 200, 300, and 500 series switches. I'll be demonstrating for you uh, network-wide zero-touch voice deployment. So it happens kind of quick. So this link I'm going to do last. So let's get in the lab and get started. Okay, so here is our physical lab. Uh, put together some SPA 504s, 514s, some 525s. I have some 7900 series IP phones. I connected a WAP 371. Uh, this is the CCA tool that's used to configure the UC. And also I have, well, there's some other 7900 series. I also connected uh, PVC 2300 so we can demonstrate when the voice services discovery protocol propagates what it will and won't send the voice VLAN to. Our competitor switches, our UC and the RV320. So there's our physical lab. So let's get into the configuration. All right, so here we are at the config portion. Basically what I did, I factory defaulted all the switches, uh, our competitors as well as ours. And so we have nothing but VLAN 1. So let's look at the 200, just VLAN 1. Uh, the 300, just VLAN 1 is there. And down to the 500 is just VLAN 1. Like I said, these are all just uh, factory default settings on these just to kind of show you the purpose of how this is all going to work. So we're going to look at the, uh, let's go to the voice VLAN section. Notice we have the enable auto voice VLAN and by external voice trigger. That's the default settings. And so let's look at our port VLAN membership just to kind of show all the way down the line. It's just VLAN 1 as well on all of the switches. So let's find that on here. And then finally on the SG500. So we're going to look at our port VLAN membership there. So factory default, nothing but VLAN 1 across there. So we need to get our voice VLAN 100 propagated from our UC device down. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to connect the cable from GE8 to the expansion port on the UC540. And once it did that there, you notice that the... Uh, the save started coming up indicating a change. That is the voice VLAN 100 being propagated. Uh, it'll show you here. It's set up as a static VLAN on the 200 switch. Also, let's go to the 300 and looks like it's propagating there. And let's confirm that. There it is. And let's jump to the SG500 and we're going to do the same. So let's look at our VLANs and there's voice VLAN 100 so let's take a peek at our port VLAN membership and we'll notice now on our access ports uh, all the phones uh, G1, 7, and 10 is our access point notice uh, GE2 there's 26 that's our uplink GE2 did not get it that's our PVC 2300 which is our camera that need voice so not going to put it there. I just put it there so you guys could see that for demonstration purposes that it will push where it's prevalent and it won't where it isn't. So got all that set. So let's jump back up to the 200. Let's take a look at its port VLAN membership. Looks like all the trunks are there. Uh oh. Uh, GE2 is uh, linked to our Netgear. So let me see if I can add a phone and do some manual config to get that up. So here we go. And we'll, we'll come back to this a little bit later like I put in the annotation here. And uh, we'll show you how this is uh, actually going to work and bring everything up. So let me save this real quick. And then we'll jump over to uh, our competitor side and show you a little bit of what I had to go through for those. Now remember these were factory defaulted as well. So starting fair on both ends. So let's get logged in. Tried to do all the configs for these from the web GUI side. Um, I was able to do add VLAN 100 here from the web GUI and it is uh, the voice VLAN now but I was not able to define that in the web. 
So I added voice VLAN to all the ports via this uh, connection down here. And then I actually had to go back into command line for the HP and define it as voice VLAN. So the QoS, um, the only option I really had here to choose was uh, deferential services, which kind of made the most sense for what we're doing. I'm not sure that's right yet, but on the D-Link side here as well, nothing automatic. Uh, the VLAN did not propagate, so I had to go here and add it. I had to add the voice VLAN, create it and enable it, add it across all the ports. Uh, here the voice VLAN was not enabled. I had to enable this here uh, from the factory default that was disabled. And so I had to make some changes on this end as well. And then um, also go down and we'll look at the section about um, the LLDP MED in a little bit. But let me show you the Netgear real quick. Um, here is logged in. I went into the VLAN. I was able to add. Uh oh, looks like it's going to make me log in again. Bear with me. Okay, here we go. Starting to come back up. So, on the switch side here, when we were looking at this, I added the voice VLAN 100 and. Uh, had some problems with the browser and I'll kind of explain all that here a little bit so to find the voice VLAN went into the advanced section looked at the VLAN membership and uh, the drop down there for the VLAN ID but I had no means to add or tag across the port so after about 20 minutes of searching on their site said I had to use an older browser so I pulled up an old opera and let me get that logged in here and then I'll show you how I added that to the access ports for this switch. So back into switching into our VLAN. I'll go into advanced, our VLAN membership. Now you see the ability to add that as tagged or untagged across. So I'm going to choose our VLAN 100. I'll go ahead and use our unit. And this is where I had it tagged all the way across for ease sake. Uh, back to the D-Link here, I wanted to show you as well, like the global settings for it. Like on most of these, the uh, was all disabled, so let's enable this real quick and apply it. And by that time, I hope uh, this phone will come back up here on this D-Link side, and we'll see if we get that uh, trunk to the 200 back up and everything talking. So let's jump over to the 200 real quick. And let's go back down to our port VLAN membership. And there we go. On GE2, uh, 100 is there. Our VSDP in conjunction with our smart ports and everything recognized via the intelligence that it did need 100 on there because we do have a, a voice endpoint requesting it once we created the manual path from the competitor switches. So. Now let's look at it from a UC perspective. Here are all the phones. They're up and registered. Most uh, voice engineers usually configure those prior, but let's say they forgot one, so we're going to have to do one from scratch. So let's go to users and phones. And I just sent an engineer out, for example, let's say we sent him out with a factory defaulted phone. Uh, of course we see here's the listing of the phones again uh, that are configured and on the UC. So we're going to send one out uh, from a factory default state. We're going to connect that to, I guess we'll go to the SG500 downstream. But let me get some stuff set up here on the UC so we can see the communication. We're going to do a debug TFTP packets and uh, let's do debug TFTP events. And then we'll get started on that. So let me click begin. Okay, our debugging is running from the UC side, so let's go to the switch. Like I said, we're going to do port 2, so let's look at it from the phone's perspective. See you in a few. Okay, so here we are at the phone. Um, we're going to, as factory defaulted, this is a SPA 525G2, so I'm going to plug it into port 2 on the SG500. Sorry about the shaky camera, I'm trying to do this with one hand. So. We get that plugged in, 
and let's go back to the phone so you can see what's going on there the phone is starting to power up and as it starts to power up it's gonna communicate to the UC uh, to see if it's got the right config information get its IP address all that good stuff so the system is booting uh, it's checking the Ethernet that's good so it should be getting its IP there it goes now as it goes through it's going to look and see about its config notice there's no config because we just set this thing up so it's going to reboot itself it's going to come back up and let's see what state we're in so we're booting again ethernet and ip and so our next step if it's not it should upgrade let's see what it's doing yep it's pulling its config file down so the firmware version should be close to the same I wouldn't think that it'd have to do much so it's connecting registering there it says pre sales lab of course it has no extension so see you back on the switch side and we'll see the rest later alright so now we're back at the SG500 let me jump to the port VLAN membership there we are, uh, GE2 added automatically. Didn't have to make any changes myself. So let's jump to the UC. Let's hit end. So we see the phone talking to the UC, getting its information like normal, like you would expect with everything configured as it needs to be. So that's good. And so just to finalize the rest of this up, I'm going to go in real quick and let's refresh and update this. We should see uh, the phone actually here registered with no info. There we go. So I'm going to do an edit. I'm going to add it, send the rest of the uh, config to it, jump back to the phone, and we'll conclude our video at that point. So let me get the rest of this typed in. Pretty easy so far, huh? So looking at it from the Cisco side, been nothing really but uh, plug and play for the most part and just uh, the config on the call manager side and that's done but from a switch perspective the uh, only thing I've done this whole lab is pointing cables plugging in one cable for the Cisco side not quite so much for the competitors but you know that's part of the process that's why we stand out so let's say okay to this get this going it says good we're okay there it is on the switch. So one last time from the phone and then we'll be done. Okay guys, now as you can see it's got extension 240 and it's uh, ready to get up and dial out. So it's a... Uh and ring it across. We're done.